Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Phelan and welcome to my video channel. What I'd like to share with you today are some ideas or concepts for treating full mouth rehabilitation cases or even these concepts can be applied to any complex dental case that you want to uh, treat in your office. And basically the main goal that I want to uh, communicate today is that I believe when you're treating complex cases, whether it be a large veneer case, an implant case, or a full mouth rehabilitation case, I believe you need to have some form of system that you follow to treat all these cases. And what I'm talking about is a way to go from point A to point B to point C that you follow consistently every time you treat a large case. And if you were at my last seminar, my occlusion, two-day occlusion seminar, I outlined the system that I use in great detail. And it's basically a 10-step system that I use to take the patient from their initial phone call, really, to the office, all the way through to completing their case. And what I have here today is uh, basically the model work for a case that I'm inserting tomorrow. I'm really excited because tomorrow I'm going to be inserting a full mouth case and you know I have the, all the model work here today. I have the ceramics right here. All of this came in by the courier this afternoon and for me when the box comes in from the courier and I'm getting the lab work for a large case it's almost like Christmas morning because I just you know, I almost stop everything that I'm doing and go and un unbox the case and take a look at it because I'm very excited to see how everything looks. And I'm anticipating, using the ceramics that I use, that the case will be excellent. And this case was completed by Harold Heindel. It's basically a full mouth case with about, I don't know, half to, more than half of the case is porcelain veneers and they're designed porcelain veneers built on a refractory dye technique, so they're layered porcelain veneers, not pressed. And then the posterior teeth are uh, completed with lava crowns. We've had excellent success using a system like that. And if you look here, the models kind of represent the system, or at least some of the steps in the system that I teach and that I follow in my practice. And basically, you know, we have the patient come in for uh, diagnostic records, and we call this the functional analysis. And basically, we're, we're trying to get centric relation mounted models, and I do two sets. This is actually the two sets here for this patient. I, I complete one set that we keep as the final you know, records or reference set, and then I have another set that we actually use for the diagnostic wax up. And in this case, we actually did three sets because we used another set to make a Coise de Programmer. This patient basically came in to see us wanting an aesthetic rehabilitation, but he had many signs of occlusal dysfunction. So between the diagnostic records and actually going forward with the case, we have a final consultation. And during the final treatment planning consultation, I discuss the findings that I find for the patient. And this patient was telling me he was having muscle tension, tension headaches, he had large masseter muscles. So I suggested, why don't we use a deprogrammer, see if you feel any better. So um, before we even did the diagnostic wax up and any equilibration, we had the patient wear a Koi's deprogrammer. And he told us he felt much better with the deprogrammer. His muscles felt less tense. It was easier to equilibrate then after uh, using the deprogrammer. And that all worked out very nicely. And basically the system follows a nice orderly sequence. We do the diagnostic records, the treatment planning consultation, and then any pre-prosthetic treatment that needs to be done like equilibration or rebuilding some of the teeth or even placing implants or root canals or anything like that. And then we do the diagnostic wax up. And so here's the diagnostic wax up for this patient. And then I use the diagnostic wax up basically as a, as a very definitive guide to prepare the teeth. And so here are the tooth preparations, the different models that uh, the ceramists use. I don't have the refractory dye models yet, but I have the, uh, the articulated models and then the, the non-cut models that we use to check the contacts and the, uh, the tissue. And basically the wax up guides the preparation and it also guides the final provisionals. And the final provisionals are really key. They're testing out the occlusal changes that we make and the aesthetic changes that we make. The main thing that I want to make sure is if I'm changing the occlusal uh, occlusion for the patient, I want to make sure they're totally comfortable with the occlusal changes. And I also have to make sure that the 
uh, incisal edge position and any change aesthetically has to be really worked out in fine detail with the provisionals before we have the ceramics build the final restorations. So this kind of gives you an overview of some parts of the system that I have. Um, if you attend one of my seminars, I go into great detail about the system that I follow and I will get into some of the areas through these uh, various uh, videos on my uh, video channel. And if you look on my website, failindentalseminars.com, I do have some articles on the website that talk about the system that I use, for example, for preparing teeth from the diagnostic wax up. I use a series of guides every time that we use to uh, make sure that the tooth preparations are appropriate for where we want to go with the case. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to unbox the ceramic restorations. I'm going to move the video camera around and I'm going to show you a close-up video of the actual ceramic restoration so you can get an appreciation of the excellent ceramic work that uh, was completed for this patient by Harold Heindel. Okay, so here's the case. Basically we have uh, six upper anterior veneers, six lower anterior veneers, some bicuspid veneers, and then the upper first bicuspids are lava crowns, and the molars are all lava crowns as well. And if you look close up, you can see the detail that Harold has uh, placed in the uh, posterior restorations. And I'm going to adjust the orientation so you can see the detail in the anterior restorations as well. So here's a close-up view of the porcelain restorations. You can see the you can see the detail that has been layered into the incisal edge and the overall layering of the ceramics as well as the outline form of the restorations and you know the patient was very concerned about the gingival embrasure between his central incisors and his anterior diastema so we made sure that that was completely closed uh, the patient's smile line covered his gingival recession he had pretty significant gingival recession i was surprised there was really no mobility no pocketing anywhere around these areas um, so we, we were able, I felt, to go ahead with the porcelain restorations. However, I prepared the porcelain restorations to a normal CEJ level uh, on the incisors with the anticipation that the patient would go ahead with gingival connective tissue grafting in the future. Now, if he had mobility on these teeth or if he was having uh, any other problems with the teeth, I would uh, have had the patient do the connective tissue grafting first. But because it wasn't uh, in the aesthetic zone, they did not show. He was having no sensitivity and no mobility in the teeth. We decided that um, he would be able to do the connective tissue grafting as a second phase of treatment. So here are the lower incisal incisor veneers. And you can see, again, the same level of detail in the ceramic layering. And the outline form of the teeth are very nice as well. The other thing I want you to notice is the angle of guidance or the cuspal incisal edge design is quite flat. And what we've tried to do with this case is basically keep the angle of guidance fairly flat and consistent with where the patient started. I generally make most of my rehabilitations with an angle of guidance very similar to where the patient started, but perhaps open the vertical dimension or change different things to make the occlusion work without changing the angle of guidance substantially. I find the patients are much more comfortable this way and we get uh, longer lasting restorations if we keep the angle of guidance somewhat flat. So I'll try and maybe create a keynote presentation about this case and videotape it so that we can see some other details about the case. But uh, for today, I basically wanted to share with you the ceramic restorations before they get bonded into place and show you, uh, you know, some nice views about the ceramics that was created by Harold Heindel for this patient. I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation and we'll tune in in the future.